Welcome to the um, Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission meeting, May 6, 2021. Um, we are going to open the minute the meeting by approving the minutes of the February 4th, 2021 meeting. Um, commissioners, have you had an opportunity to read the minutes? If not, Shannon has them on the screen. You can read them now. Uh, please indicate that you have read the minutes by. Yes. By you, Barb. Oh, hi, Barbara. How are you? Hi, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, ra raise your hand either virtually or in, uh, virtually. visually. Okay, great. Good. Excellent. Uh, Bob, have you read the minutes? Yes. Excellent. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> That's great. Very good. All right. So, could I have a motion to approve the minutes, please, of February 4th, 2021? Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you, Howard. A second. Thank you, Matt. Um, are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of approval of these minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Very good. Thank you. The minutes are approved. Oh. We'll now turn to our uh, public hearing um, for 42 Cottage Street in Unionville. Uh, sub, uh, certificate of applica an application for certificate of appropriateness submitted by Robert and Charlotte Simmons. Um, Shannon, would you read the public notice, please? Oh, yes, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Great. Okay. Hang on. Notice is hereby given that the Unionville Historic District and Properties uh, Commission will hold an online public hearing on Thursday, May 6th. 2021 at 7 p.m. on the following application. Robert Harris application for certificate of appropriateness to replace windows at 42 Cottage Street, Unionville. At this hearing, interested persons may be heard and written communications received. A copy of this proposal is on file in the planning department and in the town clerk's office at Town Hall, Farmington, Connecticut and may also be accessed on Farmington's official website, HTTPS, www.farmington-ct.org, government, historic district commission, unionville-historic-district-commission. Dated at Farmington, CT, April 19th, 2021, Unionville Historic District and Properties Commission, Lisa Johnson, Chair. Great. Well, Robert and Charlotte, uh, welcome. Um, walk us through uh, your application and what your plans are for the project for 42 Cottage Street. Okay. So we have uh, 15 windows visible from the street, uh, three in the back of the house. And from my understanding, those uh, you know don't have to meet any special requirements. Mm -hmm. But uh, we are looking to... Um, you know, upgrade, update the, the windows. So, you know, some of the original glass is broken and they're, they're drafty and single pane original windows. So, uh, you know, I thought it would be wise to, uh, you know, rip out the old windows and put in something a little more modern. Well, uh, you know, abiding to the historic nature of the original windows. Great. So talk a little bit about the windows that are, are there presently and what you would like to replace them with. So what, what I'd like to do is replace the windows that are there presently with a replacement window that would sit, um, you know, in the same, the same window frame per se. Uh, so I'd like to keep the original styling with the, you know, the six pane upper and, uh, you know, single pane lower. I presented uh, a couple, I, I sent documentation for um, a, a few different options. One is kind of like the, the, the one here on the screen, which is like the, the, the cheapest of the cheap, which Shannon informed me would, would probably 
not fly. That's just a standard vinyl replacement window. Um, I've since talked to uh, Stanford and Holly, and they, they provided me with a couple options that they thought would be suitable. One is the, the Anderson 100 series, which is on the screen right now. Mm -hmm. I've actually installed in the past. It's a composite window, very high quality, um, looks fantastic. Um, I, I really do like this window. So I'm, I'm hoping that, that this would uh, meet the requirements. And I, I did go through and, and circle in the brochure all the, the features that would be included. Um, so it, it is a single hung window. And I got the brochure right here in front of me. Uh, so white inside, white outside, that, that's kind of the same as what was there. Obviously, the glass would be a, you know, a um, dual pane, low E glass. So it kind of is consistent with a modern window. Um, now the, the grill, like I could do a grill on the upper and no grill on the lower. I had that circled on the, I think, eight, oh, there it is. Yeah, perfect. Um, I want to say these have a single lock, which is consistent with... Uh, with what is there currently. Um, on that page, so that, that's actually very close to, to what it would look like. Um, except white. Yeah, except, except white. Uh, we actually have the, the same style siding, uh, same style window trim, except it'd be a white window, so, you yeah. know. So, the, um, Okay, yeah, great. Any, anything else uh, you'd like to talk about with the windows or any other information? Um, yeah, having never done this before, I'm not entirely sure what's expected <laughs> of me. But, <laughs> You're uh, doing great. <laughs> I, I tried to go through and, and circle everything relevant in the catalog I had. I, I do have a, a quote, which I don't know offers any value to this meeting, but it, you know, it's kind of just a black and white with all the, the features called out. Um, but essentially, I, I went through and circled everything in the catalog. Um, th there is kind of the Cadillac option, which is a Lincoln replacement window. Um, it's quite a bit more expensive than, than these, significantly more expensive than the, you know, the, the lowest end vinyl replacements. Um, and uh, th those have... Shannon, I, I don't know if you have the documentation on those. Uh, it was the. I do. Yeah. I think there was a, a black and white uh, brochure on that. That was. <clears throat> so they're the Lincoln windows that we. Yeah. Part of the Sanford and Holly presentation at the April meeting, we heard from them about the Lincoln windows. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Right. Oh, actually, can you go back one page? Of course I can, yeah. To that. So, uh, it, it is a, a replacement window and, and the, <clears throat> so that's generally what it, what it looked like, what it looks like on the, in the picture above. I know it's kind of hard to see. And then to the, the lower left-hand side, you can see the installation kits for the replacement. I guess the, the two um, long, vertically oriented components would mount on the sides. Those are like the, the glides for the window and not entirely sure what we see on the left, but I think those are actual panes that pop into into the, the glides from what I understand. I've never actually worked with these windows, but uh, they, they did seem very nice. The, these ones had uh, a wood composition. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the Anderson 100 series was a, a composite composition Obviously, the, the first one we looked at was a, a vinyl window. Yeah. But okay. Good. I, what I will say with the Anderson 100 series is you don't, you don't see any seams like you would on a vinyl. A very mm. clean looking window. Um, mm -hmm. and personally, it, it's, it's kind of, you know, it's probably, it, it's just a, a very good quality window. It's not the, the Cadillac option. It's not a low end window, but, you know, I, I think the aesthetics of it. Kind of meet the intent, and I, I'd, I'd really like to put these in if possible. Great. All right, let's go uh, commissioner by commissioner with uh, questions. Um, 
I'm going to go by the little boxes and where you are. So Howard, uh, Martin, do you have questions for um, the Harrises? Uh, no, I looked over all that information that was submitted to us earlier, and I, I, I don't at this point. Okay. Uh, Bob? Um, the one thing I was looking at was, um, let's see, the, um, the Anderson window uh, was 8 over 1 versus what the house has is 6 over 1. Six, um, six small panes over one large one. And the one four over four. The circled one was um, a, an eight over one. I I believe that would probably be dependent on the size of the window. Um, obviously, a larger window would have. Uh, you know, different orientation grill, but I, I can certainly confirm that. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an answer to that right now. Mm -hmm. But lo looking through, it looks like the orientation of some of these windows is, is uh, it, it's oriented in um, configurations other than the, you know, eight over eight or eight over one so like that for example you can see there's like three vertical panels and and on the bottom there's one single so i i would think it's dependent on the size of the window but yeah. i would have to do a little more research on that okay all right anything else bob um no not really no, no. Mm. i can't pick any okay mm. um and questions no? Okay. Uh, Barbara? Uh, no, not really, except that I, I think that what happens is they're made individually and they probably have, you know, can do the three, you know, the six over one, three over three over one. Mm -hmm. um, I would hope if, so. If, if that's what they said they're selling you, then that would be what they're selling you. You, you asked them to make the window six over one, right? I, I asked for, for the grill on the top mm -hmm. and, and not on the bottom. Okay. Um, I, I showed them pictures of, of what I had currently. So although I, I don't have a, a specific answer to that question, I, I would like to believe that they provided the same thing. Yeah. It, the other thing I'm, I'm thinking is I don't know if they're used to the, um, the person I worked with is used to the level of scrutiny that uh, these types of things receive. So um, I don't know if they just checked a box for grill on the top and not on the bottom, or if, if there was a box there for the number of uh, okay. panes visible. Okay, good. Uh, Matt? So uh, Bob had a similar question to what I was gonna ask, and I've actually just verified, I went online and, and did the whole Anderson 100 design and that it, um, what what was said was by uh, Robert was true that it all depends on the size of the window as to the grill configuration. Mm -hmm. So they do have the six over one um, option. Yeah. So um, that that was my only real uh, standout question at this point. Okay. Thanks, right. Matt. Thank, you. Thank you, Matt. Um, Sherry. So as long as. Um, the window is going to look very much like the original window. Um, it looks as if ma the major difference is the material, um, not the size or the shape or the number of panes, but just the material that the window is made of. Um, so hopefully it would look like wood, um, like the original windows if possible. Um, I really don't know much about the composition or what what the various windows, but the Anderson, if the Anderson is the middle uh, in terms of the price range is the middle one that that you um, that you like, Robert, um, then it it looks good to me. 
Thanks, Jerry. What, what I can say about a, a composite window, th these in particular, because I have a little bit of experience with them, is in comparison to a vinyl window where on, on all the corners, you can see kind of like a, like a melted seam or like a welded seam where the, the plastic is physically, you know, it, it's joined mm -hmm. in those corners. Um, you know, that, that type of thing is not present on a composite window. So, uh, you know, because it's, because the, the, a wood window would be painted anyway, um, the, the aesthetics of it really, in, in my opinion, would, would be fairly comparable. Mm -hmm. So I, I have a couple of questions, uh, um, Robert and Charlotte. Um, so explain to me what composite is. What, what is that material? Is it a, it's obviously composite of, of what? Is it all plastic or is it partly yeah. wood? It's wood. Um, let's see. So that what, what they're saying in the catalog is they're calling it a, a Fibrex material, which is two times stronger than vinyl. Um, it won't rust, pit, or corrode. Yeah, it doesn't rust, pit, or corrode. I had a 40% wood. It, it's kind of... 40% wood, okay. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, 40% yeah. reclaimed wood oh, okay. by weight. Yeah, okay. when I worked with it last, I, I, I did have to shave a little bit off. And to me, it, it almost, you know, when... Uh, cutting or sanding into it, it, it almost had a, a texture similar to like a, like a fiberglass, but I, I would imagine the, the fibrous portion is probably the 40% the wood fiber. Okay. Um, and uh, are you going to have a, a the, it's going to be pre-painted or you're going to paint it yourself? Yeah, it's, it'll come finished white on both the outside and the inside. Okay, okay. And is, um, we've looked at these kinds of materials before, those of us who have been on the commission for a while, I cannot remember one of the material. is this a material that paints similar to, it looks like wood once it's painted? Is this one of those, Matt? Yeah, my yeah. Um, actually I've had experience with these as well. My father uh, installed these at, at his house as a replacement window. And it does, it paints up just like, just like a wood window would. Okay. Okay. And it does from, I mean, obviously you get up close and it's unpainted and you can yeah. kind of see a little bit of a difference, yeah. but, you know, stand three feet back or, or paint it and it looks like a painted window. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I, my second yeah. question is, if I could just finish my questions, my second question is um, the, the upper portion of the window, are those true divided lights it's not just a grill I think it, was an it, it right. is a grill um it is possible to there's a on the page right there the third option has individual glass inserts for each section of the grill yeah um you know that's yes. it, it's a premium option um there's also the simulated divided light option. Yeah. Which, with a, with a wood-like material that- Right, uh, so yeah. the grill's on the outside, but it's a single yeah. pane of glass rather than individual panes. Okay, okay. So it's a single right. pane with the grill on the outside. Okay, and is the, uh, the, ori the original windows looked, or the one you, the photograph you submitted, it looked like a true divided light. I mean, it wasn't a, gr they're not grills. On the windows that are there now. That's right, and I mean, right. okay. It's it's a complete different technology than it than it once was. I mean, it, essentially, mm -hmm. each each window, you know, in, in the the full divided light option, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's a, a sealed unit, so that you know that would pop in separately, um, and then you know and back in the day they didn't have anything like that it was just a single pane of glass that would you know fit in a wood frame and then they kind of do whatever they do to, to to hold it in there but um yeah I, what i can say is the the ones that i had quoted up the the grill is between the glass and you know from from a maintenance perspective i mean i know that this uh this meeting isn't really about maintenance and that type of thing but it, it it's it's a lot easier maintaining that you can clean the window a heck mm -hmm. of a lot easier, you know, and mm -hmm. that, that was my first option if, if we can get that passed. Mm -hmm. However, the, the second option is definitely a, a good option where you can 
see the, the grill on the exterior. Mm -hmm. um, makes it mm -hmm. a little harder to clean and, and so forth, but wouldn't be the end of the world. And then the, the full divided light, that's, those are individual windows that essentially, so there'd be six individual windows on the top and then one on the bottom. Yep. And, uh, you know, I, obviously there'd be a premium to be paid for that. Yep, yep, no, I understand. Um, all right, did all the commissioners have an opportunity to ask questions? Yes, okay. Are there any, any other questions that commissioners have? No, okay. Um, so I, I will just uh, uh, put out there what I think and then commissioners are welcome to respond to that. Um, Lisa, do you mind? Can we? At least, I, I don't believe anyone from the public has called in, but can we oh, ask for yes, from a formality? Ask for public comment, yes. please. Any public comment? If anyone's called in to offer any other comments, you can raise your hand. Okay, I, I don't see any here. All set. Sure, cool. Sorry, but thank you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good. So this is what I would like to posit. Um, I mean, based on our guidelines, which are um, more flexible than the guidelines of many historic districts in Connecticut, um, the gold standard is, as you know, to uh, repair what is there uh, rather than replace. And if that's not possible, then to replace with uh, a product that is made and looks the same as the original. Uh, in Unionville, we are more flexible than that. We have looked at materials that are not wood, but that emulate wood once they are painted. Um, but it is important that um, whatever is replaced emulates the original piece as much as possible. So in this case, um, I, I would be comfortable with the composite material that you talked about because it does paint to look like wood. Um, the true, I would also be comfortable with simulated divided light on the upper portion of the window. Um, so that would be my, um, that would be my vote for this project. So simulated divided light and the composite windows. So your, your Anderson 100 series. So other commissioners, please uh, weigh in. Let's start with uh, Howard. I agree with you, Lisa. You know, looking at the guidelines for windows, uh, I think that would fall into the proper category, the Anderson 100. Great, thank you. Uh, Bob? I ditto. <laughs> I, I agree with what you already said. Okay, very good. Um, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm kind of the Bob. Uh, Sherry? Uh, I agree. All right. Howard. Um, Matt? Um, so I, I agree. Um, my only concern with simulated divided light versus the, the true divided, and I don't, I'm not 100% and I can't seem to put my fingers on it, is um, whether or not it's um, fused to the, the glass of the window, because I have seen instances where the simulated is more of that insert and is uh, subject to uh, UV deterioration. So it's just something to be, be aware of. Um, but I do like that, uh, you know, I am in agreement with the idea of the simulated is going to look a lot closer to what's currently there today. Yeah. Okay. If, if I can jump in, Matt, I will say looking at the, the grill options in the pamphlet here, it, it does say it offers permanent grills. Okay, cool. Um, so, okay. Which is way better than, than the ones that would snap in. Right. Yes. They, they do tend to get brittle and, and, and yeah. break eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for noting that, uh, Matt. Um, Anne? Uh, it sounds like a, a good um, um, mix of, of uh, trying to do your best, you know, uh, with uh, something that's doable, I guess you'd say. So I, I, I'm good with it. 
Very good, thank you. Uh, and Barbara? Uh, yeah, actually, I think in Farmington Woods, our terraces are composite. I don't know if it's as good a composite as this, but if you were sitting on my terrace, you would not for a minute think it wasn't 100% wood. Yeah. And it, it lasts better. Um, it's protected from rain better. And even if they were to go and get a, a wood, you know, total wood frame, I think from that um, little lecture we had educational session last week, they add um, a composite or something in areas to protect it because otherwise they break down really fast. So I think it's probably, unless you go up to the window itself and touch it, I don't think you would know that there was any difference. Great, thank you, Barbara. <laughs> So I will, I will make the motion to approve the certificate of um, appropriateness um, using um, the Anderson 100 composite window with the simulated divided light on the upper portion and then the uh, open window on the bottom portion to better emulate the original windows and the original appearance uh, of the building. So that's my motion. Can I have a um, someone? Um, Second. Thank you. Um, any more discussion? Are all the windows? This is Bob Hoffman. Are all the windows the same size? No, there's there's actually three different sizes. Um, the let me see here. Would would you like the sizes? I can I can provide them. Oh, I see. The 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 upper windows are smaller, but they're all yeah. six over one. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're yeah. It, except for the, there's like a a bay window on the other side of the house. Right. Um, and those particular the the two on the outside. I don't know if we have a picture of that. Oh, there's yeah, the see there. So it's a four oh, over one, one. Yeah. but they're they're only twenty inch wide. Yeah. So I when when I order them, I can I can push to have the same four over one grill orientation. Right, right. Good. That was that's great. Yeah. And that's typical of a bay window anyway. Yeah. Can I ask what year this house was built? 1900, I believe, right? Was it right? Oh, I'm sorry. We don't know. I, uh, <laughs> well, I think, I think the oldest possible oh. date was 1800, but there's some question as to whether it was originally a carriage house or of some sort then added on so yeah it, it was added on to many times yeah um, it's great you can see like 1925 see, see that, that front part of the house where like the, the porch mm -hmm. is and then to the left of that is is a bedroom and then that that whole uh like behind that bedroom area looks like looks to me like it was also added on at a later time so yeah mm -hmm. so the, the original part of the house was that section in the middle where the, the large roof is yeah that's great it's, it's a great little building. It it's really a beautiful is. house. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. I love that house. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, yeah I had, uh, so not, not the person we bought the house from, but the person that she bought it from who was there many years. He, he said he, he knew you, Bob. Um, i trying to remember his name. Bill Miner. Yes, yes, yes. He, he dropped in today. He, he popped in. I, I was in there working on some stuff and I hear, hello, hello. And it was... <laughs> It was him. He wanted. He wanted a tour of the house. I'm like, all right. Sure. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> like, oh, yeah, everything's still there, just just the way I left it. So, wow. <laughs> welcome to Farmington. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. yeah, that's great. Good. All right, folks. There's a motion on the table. Um, it sounds like you've uh, any more questions or uh, before we move on this motion. Okay. So. All in favor of approving the uh, the COA with the uh, Anderson 100 composite window with the simulated divided uh, light, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Very good. There you go. Fantastic. So it, th does that mean I can go ahead and place the order for the window I proposed with the exception of Simulated divided light? Yes. 
Yes. Yep, yeah. You're all set. And then um, you'll need a building permit too. So we'll follow up. You'll get a letter from us, uh, Robert and Charlotte. So there'll be a letter from my office with the approval from the historic district. And then um, you're free to file for your building permit at any point. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. Great. Ms. Shannon, Welcome thank again. you so much for being so helpful answering all my questions on the No phone. problem. That's what we're here for. Glad it worked out. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, and thank welcome you. to the historic district. Thank <laughs> you. Glad you're here. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, thank you. yeah it's, a, it's a great area down there. Enjoy it. There oh, it is. Yeah, I beautiful. love it. I I love it down there. It's it's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful. All right, excellent. All right. Thanks. Well, we'll move on. To, you're welcome to stay with us for the rest of the meeting if you'd like, or or if you'd like to leave and celebrate. <laughs> so, you know, we'll shut our video off because we're going to finish our dinner, but we'll yes. uh, we'll hang around and, and see what we can learn. So right. Right. wonderful. Good. Thank you Great. so much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Excellent. Um, next on the agenda. Um, Shannon, you're thank ah, uh, 230 uh, Main Street. 230 Main. We have. Uh, yeah, George we're Saris, here to talk informally with the commission about his plans for this marvelous piece of property. Um, and George, take it away. Tell tell the commissioners what you're interested in doing. I don't know where to begin because this property is giant, uh, but uh, it's it's a wonderful piece, and uh, I'm glad it, it fell into my hands. So I'm excited to to get going on it. Um, essentially, what uh, the the first plan is to really kind of um clean up the exterior of the house um just uh, a non-historical district thing but we cleaned the back of the house where the turnaround is and there's this huge beautiful like uh center uh round turnaround there it's 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 such a beautiful piece i, I just can only imagine what it once looked like mm. um so anyway so um i'm here informally just to kind of discuss what um what I can start planning to do and what would, would work for the commission. I think that um, we, the house, when it went into the uh, commission was already, um, uh, there was already vinyl on the house um, and uh, like the shutters are vinyl and those kinds of things. So obviously I wanna replace it with a, 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 a newer material, um, that kind of thing, but clean it up a lot more. Um, a, a couple questions that I did have were um, the windows and the window trim. Um, I, Shannon, I did send you, uh, late, um, some older pictures of the home that I got from the museum, but, uh, I, I don't think they're, they're pretty hard to, uh, they're pretty hard to see what the actual trim did look like. Um, it's, uh, you really have to zoom in, mm -hmm. but, um, if you see, um, we can go at some point again to what the trim looks like now on the windows. Um, I don't think that's what it once looked like. And what I did was try to take some photos of some homes around that were Greek Revival uh, to see what kind of trim was around the window casings. Um, they're all different. So it really, <laughs> uh, really kind of depends and, and whatnot. But essentially, a lot of the ho ho homes in the 1800s were either some ornate um, crown molding or they were just a simple like one by four uh just picture frame type of thing um what's there now is uh if you scroll and you can keep going i'll get a good close-up of what's there i think there's more when you keep going so there's a good shot of it or okay uh, you want this yeah. one yeah, yeah, yeah. It has like that that um that's good that um triangle um mm. so i i what i'd like to do is probably kind of clean that up and do something that looks, you know, cleaner I, with either an MDF or, um, you know, something that would look right, you know, something that's going to last. I don't know what, uh, how, if MDF is okay with the commission or not, or just kind of why I'm here to discuss what we could do or what could be a possibility so I can put a plan together and present um, an application. Um. And by George, you want to elaborate a little bit more when you say cleaning it up, you mean taking the uh, kind of the triangular element out and just making them more square or rectangular? I think um, what I mean by that more is like just the older vinyl, it's it's fading. Um, it's um, 
coming apart in certain areas. So putting a new siding on the house, um, I'm not going to touch any of the trim, um, meaning like the white, bold um, Greek column trim. I think that's great the way it sits. I think it's actually in great shape. So really, it would just be the siding and then just the, um, the trim around the windows. That would be what I'd be doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but uh, I think you can see, uh, Shannon, in some of the pictures I sent, some close-ups of windows from the Greek Revival down the street that was built in the 1800s. Um, there, it's squared off, and I believe that house has vinyl on it, and it, it looked really clean, and, and I think the house looks great as well with what mm -hmm. they did. Um, so that's from this set of photos, George? This would be from what I had sent you in the Google photos earlier. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm trying to keep our everything straight. I know, you've got, you've got a tough job. Yeah. So keep going. Um, okay, there you go. So this mm -hmm. is from the house down the street. Yeah, the yeah. that's the Robotham's house. Mm. Yes, exactly. Um, and that, it look, it's got a nice clean look. I mean... These are bigger windows on, on the 230 main house, but I think, you know, something cleaner like this, maybe even like what I've seen uh, on Main Street in Farmington was, and then actually another Greek revival in Avon was something similar to this, but maybe a little piece of like one by or like a quarter inch on top, like almost like a rain guard too. I think yeah. that's how they built them. Um, I don't think those photos did get to you, but I can share my screen if you want. I can show you if you'd like. You know what? Go ahead. Yeah. George, when you said MDF, are you actually talking MDF or just composite? A composite or just, um, yeah. I mean, I know, I just know how wood reacts after a year or two or three or four right. or ten. So something that would last and look good for a while, you know. Um, here we go. Let's see. Um, so I, I can I can share now? You should be able to, yeah. Okay. Um, Let's see where I'm gonna go. Okay, make it exist. Okay, here we are. All right, so uh, this was—I know you probably know this house in Avon. It's beautiful. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Oh, yeah. Who doesn't? Who doesn't love this house? So, um, honestly, I'm thinking a very similar color. I'm very. I, I'm thinking this, you know, I know it's probably wood siding on this house, but, you know, it has that, that sim similar type of um, uh, the trim that I was talking about, just a very simple, you know, box yeah. out um, mm -hmm. instead of doing that triangular. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, to be honest, I actually like the look without the shutters too. It, I'll show you from the other photos. The shutters are set up in a way that I just, I don't think it makes sense. Uh, mm. See, they kind of overlay each other and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't... My guess is it didn't originally have shutters or at least yeah. not... I don't think so. Because they're not yeah. spaced appropriately. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, but I, I mean, I looked at some of the older photos and it still had them. I just... I don't know. It doesn't really make sense to me. Even on the top, you'll see here... Yeah. Uh, ...that they're doing the same thing. But uh, really, I think, honestly, with just, you know, kind of like a, a, a retrim of the windows and the siding and just um, doing something, I think the, it, the place will be amazing, you know? I'll, yeah. uh, I'll get out of here for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's one of the things. And some of the other photos as well, I think there's some updating to do. Essentially, what I was going to come to the, com uh, the committee with was, you know, um, Something like that, uh, and then um, materials over here in this photo. Actually, you could stay here. That um, I don't know what you call it. It's like that dome, the one that's uh, yeah there. I don't know what we call that, but uh, that definitely needs to be replaced. It's in terrible shape. Um, I would I would like to do something that would be cleaner. Um, you know, I I talked to my carpenter who said we could <laughs> simply just do like three double hungs and then just do some you know, some, uh, some trim on the bottom and do some shadow boxes that, that could look like that makes sense or just, just kind of putting it out there to see what we had back for a response for something like that. Yeah. And just, uh, George, uh, just share a little bit of information about this section of the building, which looks like an addition, but it's not, you found out. What so yeah, so historically, this is the original house built in 1720. 
Uh, the front of the house was built in 1830, um, the more the Greek revival style. Um, so at some point they had a giant addition. Um, and this part right here, this window was, um, it was a, like a carriage house, I would say. That was a garage. And then in the back of it was some sort of uh, storage or whatever it was. But that was the history I was given uh, from Keith Alderman, who had told me. And, and you can see in one of the older photos that it looks like it might have been a garage. And, and the old photo, 2311, in the back, you'll see it, it looks like Wait. it's definitely some... Yeah. yeah, there we go. There you go. Yeah, so right here, um, two, three, one, one, right there. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so you can see a little bit there. Yeah, right. see that. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. I and know. it does have the shutters on it. That's weird. Yeah. 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 And they overlap too. And they overlap. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it in that picture. Sure. That's yeah. It. Crazy. Um, you know, I think the shutters were functional. They weren't decorative. They were, you know, they were meant to be sh for storm right. in well, winter. Closed. Or, yeah. the sun, yeah. or for the sun to keep the sun out in the summertime. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so George is looking for some feedback from us. And I think we can be, um, you know, we should be open and candid about our thoughts. Um, um, so let's let's share. He shared a number of things about his uh, what he'd like to do with the building. Um, you know, let's share okay. what we think about that. So, uh, Howard, do you want to start? Do you have some thoughts? Well, the the whole thing with the shutters bothers me um, for two reasons. One, it was part of the original design for real issue. You know, for a real purpose or a real. Um, yeah, purpose, I guess, the right way. But that picture of the house in Avon looks fantastic without the shutters. Mm. And I don't know how we would handle that subject, but um, to me, that does not look right to have windows that close to each other with shutters overhanging. That just, mm. just doesn't seem right. Mm. I, I feel the same way, actually. I, I'm kind of torn because I, I this is this is going to be my third pre-1900 house and uh that I'm I'm I like to say rescuing uh <laughs> and uh it's it doesn't make sense uh you know and once you see the house in Avon you see how clean and Greek revivals just look so nice I mean when you let that trim do its work and you have a nice color with it and just have some landscaping I mean they they really are beautiful as they sit um so yeah they kind of bother me too I feel the same way I think some of it has to do with how they, how, I mean, those are replacements. So it's how they're mounted too. So you've got that weird overlap because they're mounted on the outside of the trim instead of actually on the edge of the window where they would have actually functionally closed. And if they were mounted to the inside of the window, actually on the trim, as the overlapping ones would actually lay flat. So you would see less of that. Hmm. That may be. I, I'm kind of, I Googled Greek Revival because as you know, Google knows everything. <laughs> and I, and they all, and it's on my phone. So the pictures are a little bit smaller, but the trim does appear, even though in some cases there's like double trim and, you know, it's a little bit more ornate, but the trim itself is straight. So I think probably taking that little triangle out is probably a good thing. They all do have shutters. Um, I'm trying to see how they are with windows close together and I really can't do it. Most do, some don't. I, so, I mean, I, I think that's just something you'll have to cross at that point, you know, to see how it looks, whether you want to take them off totally or rehang them so that they're not overhanging. I really don't know what the options are for shutters, but they were very prevalent in that era. Right. right. Uh, Bob, do you have some thoughts? When was the house sided? What? I want to say in the 80s at some point. In the 80s. When was it a vinyl sided? <laughs> Oh. Yeah. 
um, my thinking is back in the 80s, that was everybody had, when you had it done, and it was more of a colonial house, they always had these shutters that they wanted on your house. And they, in fact, when we first had our house done back in the uh, 70s, they, um, they had them on there, but we didn't like them. <laughs> so we got rid of them. And they were plastic. And uh, that, I, that didn't fly with us. These are plastic as well, and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. it's, I, I, yeah. I would hate to have to put something like that back on. Or, I mean, honestly, I, I even if we could see how it looks without it, and then be like, no, it's terrible. Then you know, that's we can always visit that when that happens as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, yeah. Yeah, uh, Sherry, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, uh, Matt, can you clarify uh, in the original photos that we saw briefly that how the shutters were hung originally? I'd like to yeah, see if that. You go back, you can see that they're, they're, they're. Where are they? Okay. Uh, it's tough so they're, they're hung on the inside over the, over yeah, the trim. Because it would have closed to, to, to cover the window. Right. Right. Okay. They're fu truly functional. Yeah. Right. So that the, that photo in the upper left there that we just saw, this is the most the earliest photo that we know of for this I house. I would say so. Yeah. Okay. Um, are the little triangle things there? I can't see anything. I mean, that's it's a pretty. It's yeah. Pretty, it's hard to tell. If you look at the bottom right photo, uh, Shannon, I think that one's pretty old too. Um, and well, no, there's a street sign there. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the one to the left of this photo, I think the more sepia toned one is uh, a little easier. But yeah, there you go. Yeah, but that's yeah. There we go. You can definitely see the overlap here, but it does look like it's yeah, it's on that inside, like Matt was talking about, which is the way they're supposed to look, of course. Right. It does. I do see a shadow though on the on the first floor windows mm -hmm. on the front. Yeah. There's a little bit of a shadow that looks like that triangular pattern. You think so? Oh, yeah. on the top. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and it would it would surprise me that they would do that with the vinyl if it wasn't there already. That's the thing. Like mm -hmm. if they were gonna vinyl side and vinyl clad the, the trim on those on those windows. I, I'd be very surprised that they would take the time to do that if it wasn't already a detail on the house at the time that they went to decide it. That's a good yeah. point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you may, you may want to investigate, pry, pry some of that off and see what's under, although they may have taken it off. I don't know. Um, Look at the one right above uh, 2415. Um, so it'll be to the right. Uh, they're right there if you go up and zoom in. Yeah. I mean, it looks straight as air, straight as an arrow, but, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? Very oh, the, you mean the trim on the top? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. what era was this photograph? 1830, but the photo's got to be, I would say, probably in the 30s or 40s. Uh, but it's got it's colored though, so I don't know mm -hmm. if it's been retouched. Mm. Mm -hmm. But the door was pink, which places the house at some sometime in the mid century. Mm -hmm. uh, because in the 30s was when the house was owned. Right. And that's when it was the pink house. So I think that. Oh, oh, huh. it was known as the pink house. Huh? The pink house. Isn't that great? The history on this house is incredible. I mean, being yeah. the pink house and what it stood for at that point and what it does now, I think makes it a very unique property. Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna go back to the pink, George? I think I, I think I have to. I think it would be long <laughs> enough. To. Yeah, I think George, from the point of view of a historic district, um, the the way the way a building looks when it comes into the historic district, and in this case, I think it was 2018 when this building came in, is sort of the baseline for the commission. So. Um, any any changes you want to make to the appearance that would be uh, significant changes, such as the shutters, even the vinyl siding, um, you really have to justify 
you know, uh, historically why you want to make those changes. So I think the shutters are a really great example of that. If all the historical photographs that you find indicate that it had shutters, we really probably would not be able to approve removing the shutters entirely. I, I'm not saying that's not the case, obviously, because the commission has the final word, but um, we would, pr what an option would be to take a look at, as Matt indicated, the way those shutters are hung, mm -hmm. uh, or maybe the, even the quality of the shutters uh, and, and ask you to think about, um, you know, changing them um, to make them more historically appropriate, but not to remove them entirely. Um, so that I'm just kind of saying baseline. I mean, yeah. for me, for me, someone coming in and saying, I want to take off the vinyl siding, I would be thrilled. However, you know, really the baseline is this building is vinyl siding when it came into the historic district. Exactly. So um, and, and you would need to kind of talk through and you would need to kind of justify that historically uh, by why you'd make such a significant change. So that's just kind of where we usually start. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's kind of how I, uh, I thought about it as well. And looking at the house and, and looking at other Greek revivals and how they've been kept up, you know, I, I just know I, it's being my, my third house again, my last house in 1880, I put the original shutters back up and I refurbished them. Yeah. And they're a real pain in the butt. But um, like Matt was saying, I hang them from the inside of the window and they were, they were functional. That's the way they work. So yeah, that, yeah. that's absolutely the truth. That's, these sit on the outside, they're just there for, you know, aesthetics and whatnot. So yeah. you know, shutters can get pretty complicated. Um, I, yeah. And they're, they're different now, they're expensive. And I, I you know, yeah. it, to get one that looks good um, and, yeah. and function and, and size is a whole custom thing, so. Yeah, yeah, no, we understand that, we truly do. Um, yeah, yeah, it's, the challenges of owning a historic building, as you know better than anybody else, are, of course. are significant. Um, yeah, um, but I'm not opposed to it. You know, if that's what the if the commission feels that way, and I, I that's I have my faith in them. So, yeah, is it possible to hang them appropriately on top of vinyl trim? Did that's they a good make question. I don't, I, I'm not yeah. sure. I mean, not well. Will it look decent? Yeah. But if you use the composite material, though, you can you can hang them. Um, I mean, it depends. You're not talking. Are you talking about the vinyls, the the same vinyl shutters that are there today, or are you talking about replacement shutters, another if of I, different form? If we all decided that they were going to be shutters, shutters, I would do everything in my powers to make them not look like the ones that are on there right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can you can hang them in composite trim, um, and and they make the hardware and everything. To uh, almost to the point where they're they're, um, I, I would say they're almost functional. You know, right? Yeah, yeah. close enough at least. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, I can absolutely start researching that and see what um what we could do for that for sure, and maybe maybe that'll be the answer. You know, which yeah. is fine too. So. Yeah. Um, I think the other question I think you raised this question, George, is the. Uh, um, the picture windows in the older part of the house that you want to do something with them. Um, yes, thank you. So how, what do commissioners feel about <clears throat> changing the um, configuration of those windows, essentially um, going from a picture window to a, you mentioned a double hung, two or three or four double hungs there. Right, like kind of like what's already in the house. Um, yeah. Something like that, and then on the bottom of it, possibly doing some sort of shadow box or whatever the commission thinks would make the most sense for that era. I just think um, anything better than what's there is good. But. Yeah. Anybody have any thoughts on that? Or Honestly, we're talking sure. about this this uh, vertical. Yeah. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so ugly. I, um. I've honestly <laughs> never seen it walking by. So I, I mean, oh. from from my point of view. I'd consider that not visible from the street. Right. Okay. It isn't. It I, isn't, is it? And, no. and, and therefore. Yep. Okay. Yeah. You can All do right. anything you want. Okay, great. Um, that's good. I mean, what I do will absolutely be matching the rest of the house, too. It won't be some sort of. I have, too, I have too much love for these types of houses. <laughs> yeah.
the smaller windows that are next, just um, uh, left of that, are they louvered windows? The windows to the left, those are louvered windows, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You never see them from the road. Yeah. Yeah, that's that part of the house is really actually. It's I mean, uh, it Lisa is. came by. It's super private back there. It's really it's believe it or not, pretty quiet. Hmm. Nice. Um, yeah, that was really attack that, and then the, the 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 window trims, those kinds of things. The roof, uh, I'm just going to replace what's there essentially. Um, color wise, is there again? I mean, replacing what's there. Uh, so essentially, just like a that slate gray would be something to go with. Yeah, it'd be a like for like, so you wouldn't need to uh, get a COA. You just have to email Shannon and let her know that and send her a photograph of what you're going to replace it with just to verify. Yep. Um, but yeah. Do um, you know what the pink house had? I don't. Uh, <laughs> I just, just curious. I, I, you know, I had a great conversation with Patty Leboutier, who, who knows this house so well, and there is there's a ton of documentation on it. Uh, so I'm gonna have to stop by the museum again and see um, mm. what's there. But um, yeah, there's a lot. And uh, um, while we're here, the barn, um, if I was to decide, um, and this is a question, maybe a zoning issue as well. If I was to add another second garage or barn, um, it would be to, to make it as similar as possible to what exists now, or how would that work? Uh gosh let's see so oh no no um you would have the whole property is under the you know the guidance of the historic district commission so we would need to see your plans they would need to be approved mm -hmm. by historic district but no they don't have to copy the original barn and in fact national park service says that you shouldn't if you put a new building on your property it shouldn't look like it's old it should look like it's of another era um yeah. however it should also be and this is where the language <laughs> is really vague it should be compatible compatible, with compatible so right. Kinda, right okay what does that right. mean uh, <laughs> i think you know george because you like design you like I buildings do. you understand yeah. that kind of language but no it does not have to match what is there um sure. not, not at all you can okay. have a little fun with it yeah, I mean, that's exactly kind of what I was thinking. So yeah. um, that's great. Okay. And I think um, that was really it up for now. And then I, I'd like to try to get on as soon as possible and get some materials for you guys to review. Um, right. I, I do have a ton of different vinyls. There's some really good stuff out that looks great, looks, you know, like wood and, and the colors stay vibrant and that kind of thing. So right. hopefully we can all come to an agreement on that. And I think that was it. I just appreciate your time for this. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, we're delighted you have this building, George. Just Wonderful. Terrific. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and so Shannon, George would have to submit his application and his material. So the next, the next meeting is June 3rd. Okay. Right. And so it has to be submitted three weeks prior. So uh, one, like two, now. three. So <laughs> next, <laughs> right. well, we're, four, we're four weeks. So next, it, it needs to be submitted next week, at least the application and a good chunk of the material, you can always supplement the material between then and the meeting date. But the the idea okay. is that um, because it's a public hearing and we do public notices, any of the application material has to be available and viewable to the public if they were to call us to say, hey, what's, you know, what's going on? We're interested, we wanna know what this looks like. So a, a good chunk of that has to be available. Um, are you okay with pictures of the vinyl siding? The, I, have, I have a bunch of samples, so a picture of everything I have would be okay? Yep. And then I can bring, I can bring them to town so you have them in hand too, if you'd like, or? Actually, that would be great. That okay. would be great. We can stop in individually Perfect. and take a look. Well, and come June, we might be meeting in person or some type of um, hybrid. We'll talk about that. We can talk about that at the end of the meeting, but um, right. depends okay. what our what the governor does on May twentieth. Right, right. Looking right. forward to it. Um, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Well, thank you, and Shannon, you've been wonderful. Thank you so much, and Lisa, thank you, and everybody oh. else. I yeah, appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. If you have any questions along the way, you know where to find me. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you. You're welcome, Bye, George. Bye, George. Thank Bye. you. Bye. <laughs>
Okay. That was great. Good. Um, that was great. I'm so glad he came in for an informal. Um, uh, he's got, that's a, that's a, there are a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot to do with the house. It's a big house. The big house. Yeah. Big house and big property. Yeah. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, <clears throat> so I think next on our agenda, we are going to, um, well, uh, Shannon, maybe you can update us on the status of our um, new properties coming in, um, sure. where we are with that time-wise. Sure. Shannon finally moved it to the top of her to-do list. Um, <laughs> so uh, at any rate, uh, the uh, final study and map along with Farmington Historic District's final study and map have made it to the clerk's office. Um, and the balloting for the two properties, I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but um, the Cardillo's opted to remove their property. They, they did not want to proceed after uh, having uh, gone through the public hearing. So uh, we have uh, Jack Kemper's property and Barbara Karski's property. Uh, balloting is taking place. I believe they're being mailed on Monday. Um, I have already reached out to both Jack and Barbara. They know that the ballots are coming. So they're both in town, nobody's off somewhere. So that should presumably go smoothly. Um, the reports were also transmitted to town council. They'll be um, receiving their reports at the next meeting um, with an official acceptance at the June meeting to schedule a July public hearing. Um, we possibly could have done a June public hearing, but I didn't want to rush Paula Ray um, in case she needed more time with the ballots or there was just a little bit of a, a hiccup. So I didn't want to rush it. So um, they'll schedule the public hearing at the June town council for the July town council meeting, but we'll be, get it all done before the summer break in August. So we'll be all set. Um, and then those properties will be officially added in to the district. So we'll have three in total, the two that I just mentioned that have the balloting, um, the Kemper and Karski property. Um, but then we also have the berries down on the, the south end of Plainville Avenue right before you get to um, to Route 6. It's on the west side of Plainville Avenue op opposite the, um, the new dental office. So, um, so great progress. And uh, there's three properties going into the Farmington Historic District as well, um, all individual properties. Um, so it's, uh, it's great. And we have, I know there's another one, we have one in Unionville on Keene Place in the queue. And there is one that just came in for, um, for Farmington Historic District on Waterville Road. Um, so, so there's some energy and enthusiasm, so it's good. Good, slow and steady wins the race, right? I uh, guess. Yeah. <laughs> Particularly the slow, the slow part as well. Yeah. But yeah. we got, we got there. We got there. It's in. So we'll, uh, yeah. we'll uh, count it as good. Good. That's great. Very yeah. good. Any questions about uh, that? It's no good. Great. All right, I think our next agenda item would be um, the guidelines. We got a little bit um, derailed with uh, some other business. We haven't really had time to uh, attend to that as a commission. Um, my suggestion would be to um, we'll go back to that at our next meeting. We will probably have uh, George Saris uh, submit a COA for our next meeting. Um, we may have something else come in, but we'll see in a week's time, maybe not, but who knows. Um, but let's uh, let's focus on the guidelines then at our next meeting. Okay. That would be our June meeting. Um, Good. And we have, uh, we all had our assignments uh, to go through anything. If you need uh, to be reminded about which section of yours, um, you could email me or Shannon and we can remind you. Um, they're in the minutes there. Well, they're here. Yeah. Yeah, they're yeah, here on the, the screen minutes. and then they're um, they're in the minutes from the February meeting. So yeah, great. Great. Everyone That's should great. have them. Yeah, good. All right. All right. Was there any other business, Shannon, on our agenda? 
Um, no, just um, unless anyone wanted a recap of the educational meeting at all. Um, but that's the only other thing I had is, um, you know, I thought they both, and I didn't do meeting minutes for them. The recordings are online. Um, uh, but I think both, um, you know, both meetings went really well and were well received, mm -hmm. both the, um, you know, the, the HBAC units and the, um, the history of Sanford and Holly and all the uh, building materials. The history was just, I loved, oh, that was, that was great. I'd love to sit at their dining room table on a Sunday and just listen yeah. to the story. That that was fun. It was the photographs that Frank provided for Sanford and Holly history were really lovely. Really yeah. lovely. That's great. Good. All right. Yeah, yeah it was amazing uh, seeing the building. Um, that that picture of the building during the flood. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah really something. Um, good. All right then. So, and, um, excuse me, uh, uh, Sh uh, Shannon, did you send something out with the, uh, uh, to, uh, the, where we can get to those? Um, uh, the links, I can, I, 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 I can, I can yeah. certainly do that, but I can show you. Yeah. So on our, um, I, I felt really bad about missing both of them, but uh, I, it will give me a chance to catch up, I guess. Sorry, I thought I had sent. Uh, maybe I didn't send the link or maybe it, it hadn't processed yet. So here's our our town of Farmington webpage. Yeah. Okay. So it's the main page. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I can certainly follow up to send a link, but I, I figured I'd I'd walk through because yeah, right. yeah. all the all the recordings are here. So under government, we come to historic district commission. And we've got Farmington and Unionville, oh, and then the online meeting recordings, all of them are here. Okay. Um, so here's the Farmington, and then here's Unionville. So the oh, April great. 1st is the Sanford and Holly, yeah. the March 4th is the HBAC, um, and then the April 4th are the meeting minutes we just approved. So they're all great. That's all yeah. I need. That's, That's all great. I need. Yeah. yeah. They're actually there for every, so for all our land use boards, they're all there and for town council, so town plan and zoning. So some of these have been going to midnight. So if any of you are having trouble sleeping at night, just <laughs> click, click on any of those and I guarantee I can, I can cure anyone's insomnia as of late. So town plan and zoning or inland wetlands. Oh man. I'll have you sound asleep in 30 minutes or less. <laughs> I will remember yeah. that. Good to know. <laughs> They've been, I've had some really long meetings lately going till 11 o'clock or midnight. So uh, oh there's oh. plenty of material. <laughs> Too much. So right. these are meetings. These are commissions I don't want to join. <laughs> you know what? This is just, we're kind of in an anomaly right now. We're, uh, we're coming out of it. We're getting back to a little more regular normalcy, but uh yeah, no, they're um, they're also yeah. a little more regimented than than uh, this group has to be. So. Yeah, that's great. Good. All right. Good. Well, if there is no more business to come before the commission, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I just, if I just real quick, I do want to touch base on the fact that we might be shifting to in person meetings. Oh yes. Oh. Um, just real quick. So the governor's orders are supposed to expire. May 19th, May 20th, it depends on which attorney you talk to or midnight of which date. Um, but we, like, it was 1150 of April 19th that he extended the executive orders to get us to hear. Um, those orders are what is allowing us as a land use, technically this is a land use board, to meet virtually. Uh, the general statutes specify that the land use boards are to meet in person. So there needs to, the legislature, my understanding is the legislature is working on um, changing the wording to allow for a hybrid version. Um, so ideally that's where we will get to, that we would be allowed to meet in person, but those that um, felt more comfortable or needed to for medical reasons or whatever would be able to log in so that we would 
be able to meet down in the council chambers, but we would still also be hosting a portion of this on an online platform. That's um, good. So that's what we're hoping is going to happen. Um, if that doesn't happen, then my understanding is we kind of hit a cliff on May 20th and we will shift immediately to all in person. Oh, so, it would be with face masks or? It would be with face masks and right. social distancing and as much as we can down in the council chamber. So all of those logistics, we are going to have to pivot on really quick. So we're going to have fun time on a, on a staff side of this. Mm -hmm. um, but right now we can't, like right now, this is the world we're living in. So we're just going to have to kind of deal with that. But I'm yeah. just yeah. letting you know, so you can start to figure out what you think you may or may not be comfortable with and how you want to proceed. Um, and then we're just continuing to stay in touch with our town attorneys and making sure that we're current with the latest information. So, but it's, it's coming, we're a lot closer than we have been to getting back together for those that are comfortable to do so. Yeah, great. So that's, that's, so that's, that's all I had I just yeah. to give everybody a heads up. Yeah, thank you. Who's, who's not been vaccinated? Hmm. I'm sorry, what was that? Who's not been vaccinated? Who's not been vaccinated? I, I did, I did mine too, but I'm sure it's just people all over on that one. I just did my, my second shot last week. <laughs> That's great. It's a good feeling, isn't it? It is. It really is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Glad to hear that. Good. Is there anything else anybody would like to talk about or inform the commission about or ask questions about? I'm back at it again, working on porches. I was out there for two hours this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to come up with an award just for you. Yeah. <laughs> the Persistence Award. <laughs> it took about two hours to do roughly eight spindles on oh. the railing of the porch. Oh, oh. <laughs> You're going to have feel like, your, I feel my like arms. Eight. I yeah. feel your pain, Matt. Yeah. 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 I have a lot of spindles there, too. Uh, okay. Oh, that's right, Sherry. Little by little. Little, yeah. by little. Little by little. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's too funny. Okay. All right, everyone. I think we're at. Okay. And thank you very, very thank much. Thank you. Good, thank good you. And good humor. Take good care. Oh, I think, do we have to do a motion? Quick, somebody yeah. make a motion. Motion, a motion adjourn. Okay. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Bye. All right. Okay. Very good. Bye. Bye.